right, so this is a throwback to when I was racing in Thailand. I thought, you know what, I watched this video recently and thought it's actually quite funny in my commentary and also I should do a commentary now because I've raced a lot more than I used to. Um, and, you know, it was a good race to be fair. I was like 65K, pan flat. Uh, I got this boy in leg warmers who's looking looking nice and some more quick step stuff. So yeah, basically pan flat, 65K, I, quite hot, like 30 degrees, but nothing crazy. Um, and basically all it was was just like, need to get in the break, need to get in the break, need to get in the break. I'd heard in Thailand often they don't chase back breaks, which is sort of true in most countries, to be fair. Um, and so I was just like committed 100% to chasing every break um, that looks strong. So you can see there's like a couple of people here, but I had no idea. There was like one bloke I was racing with, um, Christian, who was like strong. And then I literally had no clue who anyone else was. So just had to do the classic, do they look strong? Um, so you can see here, me out in the wind, not conserving too much energy, um, yeah, it's, it's not a pretty sight, let's be honest, but to be fair, we're doing like 36k an hour, so it's not too bad. Anyway, go under this motorway bridge, um, and it's like, to be fair, a decent, it was like one of the only actual corners where you had to, had to break or whatever. You can see me hopping on the outside, big licks around the corner, love to see it. Um, and I hop on this bloke's wheel, and he was actually the strongest bloke in, in the race, to be fair. Um, and out of this corner, sort of whack it up. Um, these numbers, I like, I actually had okay numbers back in 2019. Uh, no, this is 2018 actually, but yeah, like had some okay numbers. Almost hit a thousand watts in this race, so that was big. But you can see coming out of here, it's really whacked it up quite a lot, the speed, almost 50k an hour, which is like decent. Thing to note, these tie roads are so quick, like the speeds are stupid. So like 58k an hour is like, yeah, fair enough. Um, not that crazy. Anyway, he attacks, I follow him. There's like some brakes going. Uh, we're basically racing on a motorway, so there's not too much tactical positioning going on. It's just basically who's strong. He looks at me, he's like, you're going to pull a turn? And I was like, lol, no. He attacks again. I'm like, okay, 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 we need to follow this big man. So you can see me trying to get error. It's not a pretty sight. Um, but, you know, holding some okay power on the flat to get this boy back. Um, and at this point, we're actually in the lead, to be honest. And I think in hindsight, I probably would have worked with this man more. Because I think then I didn't have as much confidence in myself as I probably do now of like, then I was like, oh, I don't want to be on my way on my own or with him because like I might not want to hold it. Well, now I'm like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. Like, uh, it would be okay. Um, You can see here, like I'm a bit reluctant to pull a turn and I do pull a turn, but nothing really happens. This guy solos off. There's already one bloke up the road. This guy like solos off. Um, And to be honest, like, I guess this book was where I was like, well, there's just no point following this. Like, it's just, it's just not going to happen. Um, you know, when it's just not the vibe. Like earlier I said, you know, you've got to follow every break. But even then, even 2018, Charlie had some cool and realized that this was this was the move that we didn't need to chase back. So you can see, like, it's just just not much happening, to be honest. It's, ju it's just, you know, 38K an hour, very chill, 120 watts. It really is ideal. Um, but it, it does liven up, to be fair. And... Um, sort of there's like two up the road here you can see these people are like i know they're not pulling but they're just like the pace is okay anyway i attack because i'm like might as well just get across trying to get some motor pacing off this this motorbike it said goes okay it's not great um and to be honest like they weren't that far up the road i'd say maybe 10 15 seconds so it was quite a big attack from myself to get across um a couple of people hopped on my wheel which was good uh, and then we sort of went into rotation more or less straight away um, which was nice. Uh, I mean, the tactics were really like to go solo at every point. Um, and I guess, you know, it's the same tactics I have now in 99% of road races, getting a break and uh, hope you can take the solo win. Uh, basically all my tactics are. Um, if you like this video, drop it a like and also, uh, and I'll do some more because I've got some other footage from Thailand and North Australia and hopefully I'll be able to film in the UK soon when I sort my life out and get an email to British Cycling so I can film. Anyway, these guys swapping turns left, right and centre is going okay. And back then I thought this bloke um, who kept on attacking the ladder attack before the triple S boy, he kept on attacking. I was like, why is he doing this? But in hindsight, perfect tactics because it just wasn't fast enough. You know when you're in the break and you're just rolling turns and it's like, we're just, we're just not going to catch them. Like, come on, you know, something's got to change. Um, and then I was like, why? But it makes 100% sense. Like, if it's not going to happen, you just have to attack and drop the weaker people. And I think back then I was more like, oh, yeah, you know, everyone's strong enough. But it's like, actually, you just want, like, two or three people who are all pulling hard turns. And that's quicker than, like, six or seven just soft tapping through or whatever. So, anyway, you can see here, like, I follow him, which is good. Um, I sort of cut out some exciting parts actually where I was motor pacing a lorry. Um, it's sort of quite fun racing in Thailand because the traffic is quite slow. We can see this mo This is where I do motor pace the, the truck, but there was also a motorbike I motor pace as well. Because the, the traffic is quite slow. I'm going 49k an hour here and catching him. So it's like, you know, I, 
I think I had too much honor back then. I should have just really hopped on the truck early doors like this bad, this lad in front of me did. But it is quite useful, actually, because if you need to hop across a, a gap, just find a local lorry uh, that will tow you across. But anyway, you can see the two guys are up here um, and me and this guy are bridging across. It was like two, three minutes. It wasn't that hard, to be honest. Um, this whole race, it was quite funny. I think it was like 2.18 normalized for an hour and a half, which I was, thought was quite tough then, but actually, like, compared to these days, not too hard although like my 20 minutes is probably stronger then or similar to what it is now i think my endurance for these races is a lot better so you can see there's suddenly four guys i do the rui costa sit at the back i'm like no i'm not pulling turns eventually i do end up pulling turns we're sort of more on rural roads now um it's a bit more busy uh, sort of in terms of traffic oncoming because the motorway was actually not too bad um and yeah like you know just pull some turns see what happens one guy i think got a puncture pretty early doors which was not ideal so then there were three but I think, you know, it's when you get in the break, it's just, it's going to happen. And this was one of those days when you just look around and like, I had no clue what the time gap was. I was just pointing to my hand, like I'm trying to get a signal of uh, like a watch because I had no idea how to say what the, what the time is, what's the time gap in Thai. Um, so again, overtaking some slow moving traffic. Um, it's a bit more chaotic than the UK, to be fair, but it was a lot, lot smaller field. Uh, white lines, well, yellow lines there, I don't think they really counted, to be honest. So you can see this guy's pulling through as well, um, which was okay. But yeah, like there's no, there was no real stress. Like I'm, I was pretty confident we were gonna get away because like if anyone was decent, they would have come. Here's some technical, technical aspects. Um, this guy was okay at cornering. Like he wasn't, he wasn't unreal. Um, but you know, got the job done in the end. Uh, and this is actually where we dropped some people around corners. A lot of them didn't seem to corner. This guy had some horrendous cornering technique because he like slammed on the brakes halfway through a corner. Was not appreciative of that. Um, and this, to be fair, I would say is like one thing that was just annoying about the race. There wasn't many technical sections and obviously it was pan flat. So that was not ideal. Here's me throwing back to this to the puppy paws, uh, which was pretty good. I was an addict back then. I used to have sandpaper on my bars so I could uh, do the puppy paws without any uh, like pain. Uh, well, I wouldn't slip anywhere. Um, so this is where some ropey tactics come in from Charlie. I'm like pulling this, like trying to get it away. I'm probably being a bit too naive because realistically, this guy then attacks me and I'm like, like it is odd. I don't really still get why he did attack me because it was just like, I don't think you're going to get gap. Do you really want to do 20k solo? It's like, well, maybe, but sh I mean, he seemed quite punchy. I mean, maybe it's just because I never back my sprint, but like surely he'd been me in a sprint. So why would he attack? Anyway, he attacked. So I was like, okay, fair enough. Um... I'm not really too stressed. There was like the two people in the break were now spat. It was literally just me and him. So I was like, well, second place in my first race in Thailand is fine. I'm not really that stressed about it. Like there's no prize money or anything. It was just like getting a nice trophy. To be fair, you got a huge one in comparison to my tiny one. But in hindsight, I pull another turn, which it was like, okay, fine. But probably shouldn't, well, I'm not sure I shouldn't have pulled a turn. But then he attacks me again, which in hindsight is sort of fine tactics. He's just trying to work me over. But... It, it didn't really make sense. I still don't understand it. If, if you think you do, leave a comment because, like, it just makes no sense to me. It's just like, why do you want to do 20k as solo? Like, you know, it, it's not like there's a good time to attack. It's not like it's uphill. It's not like it's downhill. Then he has a go at me because obviously I don't pull a turn. He's gesticulating, which we love to see because I often do the same thing to be fair when people don't pull a turn. And then I'm like, okay, fine, we'll, we'll pull a turn. I think I got my point across that big man, like, let's just work together and then just, you know, see what happens later. Um, he's, you know, trying to flick me through as much as possible. Um, and I think, yeah, now I'm like, like fair enough, fair enough. We, we will pull a turn. Um, but all this messing around didn't really help us because another guy got back on. But like, you know, when you drop someone and you just know they're not going to be an, a fact of the race, it was just me be him. And in my little brain, it was very much, how am I going to beat this person on a pan flat course when I don't really have much of a sprint? So in hindsight, I probably should have backed my sprint more because actually I think yeah, I was I was sprinting okay then and like he didn't look that punchy. So you can see this is the th the guy who joined us. So we're now back on the motorway going towards the start finish. Um, so it's basically a right hand corner and then it's like pan flat, slightly uphill. I think it was a headwind apparently on the day or I just had bad watts. That's why I, cl I claimed before. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, yeah, so about this point in the race with about like 4K, 3K left, I decide... I'm going to do the classic launch the big attack with like 3k left and hope he doesn't leave it doesn't like follow me there were two issues with this number one i was like oh there's two people he'll look at him but i was like he just won't because he knows he's terrible so like he just knows he has to close himself so that was issue number one issue number two i don't think i've timed it great uh we'll see in a minute how i where i time it but i think in reality i, I should have done better like you can see here i'm not pulling strong turns to be honest like i didn't it's not that I didn't, um, you know, it's just obvious we're going to win. So just pull some uh, weakish turns. But to be honest, 
I should have not pulled a single turn. Like, I think that was sort of naivety on my part. Like, I should have really just, like, rolled through and done nothing. Like, he's tight tightening his Velcro or whatever, which is uh, what you love to see. Drinking his last little bit of water um, and is ready for the sprint. I don't know if he knew what he was expecting it. I guess the thing is, you probably just think it's going to come down to a sprint. But I really didn't want to do it, leave it to a sprint because I'm just like... I always think with me, it's like, you might as well try. Like, the worst that comes, the worst, you know, you get second. But probably going to get second in a sprint. But it's hard for me to win. So going around this corner, I knew he was going to take a pull. You know, it was like very premeditated, like there was no one on the fly attack. Um, and I think ultimately in comparison, when I did do the, almost the identical tactics the other week and won the race, the issue was is that it was like someone attacked before me, but with three people, one lad's not going to attack. You know, it's it's hard. It wasn't hard enough. Like we weren't pulling hard enough turns, so it's really not a great time to attack. In some ways, I should have attacked further out when it was actually harder. Um, but you can see here, so he's pulling turns like 40k an hour. It's not very hard. He's going to flick his elbow and ride to the left. And then I basically just launch it straight away. So you can see he flicks the elbow. I whack it up like 990 watts. It was decent, to be fair. Um, I'd say I was sort of swerving all over the road to try and stop him having the draft. And I think, to be honest, like I did an okay job um, for a lot of it. Like I held 600 for a long time. So it was actually quite hard for him to get in my, in my wheel. Because I thought, again, I think it's, it was always with these ones. You just want to crack them mentally more than anything else. So, yeah, basically, that's what I did end up doing. Held, like, 350, 360, which was okay. But I think the thing is, I should have just committed more. Like, I was sort of waving around. I was looking back, and it's just like, there's just no point looking back. Like, you, you, you know, you put everything into this attack. Um, you just got to go full. You can see I'm sort of, like, numbers dropping a little bit. It's like, nah, 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 nah. Just, you know, if you if you go for this attack, you just got to whack it all and just be like, I'm going to hold this watts. And if he catches me... You know, I'll, I'll, I'll live with that. I'll try to follow the attack. But I actually, like, you know, at this point, it's a decent gap. You're, you're like, I don't know if he's going to get back. Do you know what I mean? Like, at some point, the person does crap mentally. They're like, I've been chasing him for, like, a minute, two minutes, and I'm just not getting him back. So, yeah, I think that was probably the biggest mistake. It was about here, I decided, well, I sort of ran out of legs a little bit as well. I think this puppy pause is good, but I can't do too much power in it. So it wasn't great. Like, I'm still, you know, going along with decent speed. But you have to remember in Thailand, like, this isn't crazy speed because the roads are so quick. Um, and here, I actually look back, see he's coming, and then, like, sit up to try and, like, save some energy. And I think that was a huge error. I think it was, like, because then I was carrying less speed than him. He was already had a speed advantage because, obviously, he's catching me. Then I sit up, so I'm doing even less watts. And then he just goes flying past. So you can see, like, this is the bit where we go on the right. I sort of, like, really start to sit up a little bit. Um, actually, no, I don't. I still keep going. Like, to be fair, it was a decent gap. This is why I'm like, I should have just committed fully. Like, I was committing fully now, and now I set up. But obviously, I've known 90 watts. He's going to come past with far more speed because he literally attacks into me straight over the top. And I try and do watts and I have nothing. But, like, you see, like, that just was so dumb because if I'd kept, like, 300 watts, I wouldn't have tired myself out that much. And then I would have had more chance of going with him because I would have a higher speed. Anyway, I'll roll in for second. Um, which is a decent result and to be fair my best result on the road at that point um so yeah anyway i'll post some more from australia and thailand this week and um, cheers for watching i'll see you in the next one